From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Uh, Mac Woodson, Mr. Dollar. The girl from the claims office called and uh, gave me this number. Oh, yes, Mr. Woodson. It seems we're working on the same case for the same company. Well, I've been working on Mr. Ed Morgan's files and records here for the past week now. I- I've turned up some... How much interest- is missing? Well, about $80,000 so far. All of it was taken during the four months immediately preceding his death. I- I'll say one thing. In 20 years as an accountant, I've never seen a looting more cleverly carried out. Oh, Ed was a very bright lad. A man who'd go far, they all said. Did uh, you know him, Mr. Dollar? I thought I did. He was one of my best friends. But it turns out I'm only beginning to know him. Could you meet me in his office around 10 o'clock, Mr. Woodson? Yes, yes, that's where I am now. I've been working on these books day and night. Better be careful. That's what got Ed into trouble. Uh, How's that? Tonight, and every weekday night... Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office, Eternity Mutual Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment... The Confidential Matter. Location, San Francisco. Expense account continued. Item four, one dollar, one martini. Item five, one dollar, one tip to the bartender who stirred the martini. All in the house that Jack built. I don't know who built it, actually. But it took Jack to live in it. Twelve hundred bucks a month, to be exact. That was the take-home bite for an apartment at the Drakeley Arms on Knob Hill. And, of course, that didn't include drinks in the intimate little private bar just off the lobby. And this is where Ed Morgan had lived during the last five months of his life, until he missed a curve one night and drove his car off a cliff into the Pacific. Ed Morgan, whose idea of a big night had always been his pipe, slippers, and a mystery novel. But things were different when I'd known him and been his friend. For one thing, he hadn't stolen $80,000. Or I don't think he had. Do you find the martini adequate to your expectations, sir? Oh, yeah. Yeah, indeed. It's a heck of a belt for a buck. Thank you, sir. Quite a nice little place you got here. Oh, I find it a most agreeable sanctuary from the stress and strife and the hurly-burly of the city. Been here long? I have tended by here in the Drakely Arms Rendezvous for some two years now. Oh, well, then you may have known a friend of mine who had an apartment here uh, up until a month ago. A uh, Mr. Edward Morgan? Oh, yes. Mr. Morgan was a regular customer here. An eager supplicant for my humble and healing wares. A beer drinker, mostly, as I recall. Uh, The rendezvous does not serve beer, sir. Oh, forgive me. I didn't know. Quite all right, sir. Yes, I was here before Mr. Morgan moved in. and Here I am still, now that he is no longer with us. Such is the chance and mystery of life. (sighs) One just never knows. Precisely. Oh, could I serve you Not yet, thanks. Get to know Ed pretty well, did you? Mm, the policy of the Drakeley Arms, sir, is to maintain a certain degree of formality in relations between guests and personnel. <laughs> sort of like a zoo, you might say, with bars to separate the people from the animals. <laughs> the comparison is quite apt. Somehow, I can't see Ed Morgan sacking in in a marble squirrel cage like this, John. Mm, I confess, I, he hardly seemed the type to me, sir. He was much too unrestrained for the Drakeley. He came in here a lot, did he? Almost nightly. For a few minutes, at least, on his way to some gala night spot. Gala night spot, Ed Morgan? Oh, yes. In all the years I knew Ed, I was only able to drag him into a gala night spot once. He stayed 20 minutes, then left because his tie was choking. Are you quite certain that your friend was the same Ed Morgan? I wish I weren't. Who were his friends? Did he always come in alone? Oh, no. No, never alone, sir. He and Nicky were inseparable. Nicky? Oh, I should say, of course, Mrs. Barrett. Oh, a young widow, as I remember. Lives here in the building. A lovely girl. Fascinating. And also unrestrained? Definitely. And Ed, then, was one of her friends. Oh, they were together every night, sir. An hour here in our little establishment, a few champagne cocktails, then out to dinner, dancing, the opera, ballet. Ed Morgan? Oh, quite. Life was just a mad whirl for those two. I gather your friend was something of a wealthy playboy. He was a claims adjuster for an insurance company. Hmm. Then uh, how could he possibly live in the fashion he did? 
If I told you, you'd flip. I beg your pardon? Tell me something. Was Ed in here on the night he was killed? Oh, yes, yes. He left here about uh, nine, as I recall. And a few hours later, he was dead. How did this Nikki take it? Pretty broken up, was she? Uh, she is a woman of very strong character. Ah, huh? oh, in other words, she didn't ban an eye. Well, I Look, wouldn't... that night Ed was killed. Did he leave here alone? No, sir. He was alone when he went off the cliff. Not when he left here, though. Nikki was with him. Item six, two dollars and forty cents. Taxi to the Telegraph Hill apartment of Lisa Duval. Lisa had been Ed Morgan's secretary for about four years. But it seemed Miss Mousy business at the office was Miss North Beach Bohemia at home. Italian slacks and halter. Cushions on the floor. And naturally, a view of the Bay Bridge from a corner window. We sat on the floor, naturally, and drank Chianti from a half-gallon jug while a record player moaned agonizedly under the gouging of its needle. Bartok, I gathered, was now last year's kick. This was progressive jazz. Maybe it seems a little affected to you, Mr. Dollar. The way I dress and live in private life, as you might say. Why so? Everybody's got a right to salt his own dish of porridge the way he likes it. Well, I've done this deliberately, I guess, as a sort of antidote for the insurance business. Oh, has it been that bad? Not bad. Boring. Oh, not your end of it, of course. Investigation work must be exciting. Yes, yeah, scream a minute, day and night. But just keeping records, filing papers week after week. I used to stare out of the office window at the ships in the harbor and think about stowing away on one. But, of course, I didn't have the nerve. Mm, too bad. The crews would have been delirious. I thought of quitting several times. I guess I stayed because of Ed, Mr. Morgan. Oh? He was always so wonderful to work for, so lenient and understanding, up until the last few months, at least. What about those last few months, Lisa? What came over him? I don't know. He was different, that's all. As though he were tense and nervous, under pressure. Any idea where the pressures came from? He didn't confide in me, Mr. Dollar. What, uh, what were your personal relations between the two of you during the years you worked for him? What do you mean? Well, I mean, were you friendly, formal, strictly business? Friendly, I think, would cover it best. Did you see each other outside of office hours? Occasionally. I notice one of his pipes there in the bookcase. He'd come here sometimes in the evening, and we'd listen to music and talk. Up until the... Until the last few months? It wasn't that we stopped being friends, Mr. Dollar. He was... he was just different, that's all. Tense, under pressure. That's about the only way I can describe it. But you don't know why he was that way. Well, looking back, I suppose it was because of the money. If he really did take it. I just... I just can't believe it. Ed wasn't that kind of a man. He was gentle and honest. At least until... Until the last few months. Yes. Or were you going to say... Until she came along? How did you... Lisa. Yes. How long have you been in love with Ed? Ever since I started to work for him. But he never knew it. He couldn't even see me. I'm sorry, Lisa. I'm sorry for you too, Mr. Dollar. I know how close you and Ed were. And I know how you must feel being called in and having... Forget it. It's a job, that's all. Sure, just a job. So is major surgery. This woman he was going around with, Nikki Barrett. Did you ever meet her... I met her. Well, what did you think? What's the difference? I was prejudiced. I'll allow for that. In the old days, they used to believe in witches, vampires. Some of them were very beautiful, and they'd lure a man on and on, and then destroy him. And you think she did something like that to Ed? Oh, you weren't out this way during the time he knew her. You weren't around him to see how he'd changed. No, no. Oddly enough, the one time I was through here about three months ago, Ed was unexpectedly called away on business. He wasn't called away. He was avoiding you. He knew he was getting in too deep. How did he meet her? She came to the office with a life insurance claim, $50,000. Her husband had just died. I knew her type from the minute she walked in. A grieving widow, all in black, and looking like a power's model. 
And he just melted down and laid his head under her foot. That was the start of it. Well, why'd she come to him? Unless she had a disputed claim. It was a double indemnity clause. Her husband had been killed in an accident. Her husband, too, huh? What do you mean? Ed Morgan died in an accident. Remember? Item 7, a dollar and 15 cents taxi from Lisa's apartment to the Deckman building on Montgomery Street. It was after 10 and the financial district was nearly deserted. The canyons between the tall buildings were hollow and empty. A cold wind was blowing off the bay. Or maybe it was blowing out of the past. An old, old past, dead and far away. The pattern was beginning to look familiar. Too familiar. Lord, the woman gave me the forbidden apple to eat. Ed, too, it seemed. The same old wine, the same old dodge. And yet there was something not quite right about that pattern. McCartan runs into some funny ones, Mr. Dollar. This Morgan case here is one of them. How do you mean, Mr. Woodson? Well, the way he was going about it, for one thing. Running hog wild, as you might say. Of course, as I said on the phone, his general scheme was pretty clever. He certainly knew standard procedures. Well, he'd been with the company a long time. Well, now, these uh, payoff checks on claims, of course, they were sent out from Hartford in care of this office. So what Morgan did was open a disbursement account in the bank here, then sign and deposit the checks and draw out the money in cash chargeable to direct disbursement funds under his own name. Mr. Woodson... Now, of course, the canceled checks would return to Hartford, but... Since they were countersigned to disbursement, they wouldn't even be processed. Instead, they'd be returned to Morgan. So, you see, there'd be no evidence in Hartford... Mr. Woodson, I'll accept the fact that Ed was clever. But what did you mean there was something funny in the way he was going about it? Well, he must have known it couldn't last. It was a good scheme for a short time, but it carried the seeds of its own destruction. In what way? Complaints. Some of these claims are four months old and legitimate claims. Morgan couldn't stall these people off forever. Oh, I see. Only other embezzlement case I've worked on that was similar was a man who worked a quick swindle for a blackmail payoff. He knew he'd probably get caught, but he just had to take the chance. Yeah, you may have stumbled onto something, Mr. Woodson. Oh, is that so? Uh, you mean it ties in with that file folder you've been studying there? Oh, I don't know. It's an investigation report on an accidental death. Happened about a year ago. Ed Morgan handled the insurance claim and got to know the widow. He'd been running around with her for several months just before his death. I don't... Quite see the con- Oh, oh, of course. Mr. Morgan also died in an accident. Unless he was murdered. Now, here is our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, $80,000 and a beautiful girl, both missing. Then one of the two is found and a bombshell explodes. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Hugh Brundig speaking.